Two years ago, David was involved in a terrible car accident while driving back to California from Mexico. There was a problem with the car, and I landed in the highway with my head first. Okay. But like this truck that is coming by? For five weeks, David lay in a coma. Serious injuries led to the loss of his right arm. But to everyone's relief, when he regained consciousness, his mental capacities seemed to be intact. He was articulate, he was intelligent, not obviously psychotic or emotionally disturbed. Uh, he could read a newspaper, everything seemed fine, except he had one profound delusion. He would look at his mother and he would say, this woman, doctor, she looks exactly like my mother. But in fact, she's not my mother, she's an imposter. She's some other woman pretending to be my mother. The injury to David's brain had brought on a very rare condition called the Capgra delusion. I was cooking dinner and he probably didn't like the food that night. Okay. And, and he said, you know, the lady who comes in the morning, she cooks much better than you. Okay. It's, a, it's that lady, I like that lady very much. Okay. <laughs> But the lady was me, of course, all the time. David was also convinced that his father was an imposter. He would say to his dad, you know, I'm sure you would like to meet this guy. He's so much like you, but he drives better. He doesn't go so fast. It can look identical to him, exactly like him, but it's not him. After two months of this disturbing behavior, David's parents decided to seek help from Ramachandran. Yeah, but when you looked at your, the person who looked like your father, what was your feeling? Does it, did it look like there's some other person who resembles your father? Is not really your father, something like that? Did exactly. Yeah. There's a difference of the fact that I know that that person happens not to be my father. Uh -huh. It is not my father or my mother, right? Okay. I don't expect things from that person as I would expect from my parents. No. I got to coma. The teacher today. David not only had delusions about people, he also believed that the house that he lived in was just an imitation of his home. One day he started getting really angry. I want to go to my house. I want to go to David's house. I want to go to David's house. And we're in the apartment. And I'm just going, what am I going to do? So I decided, I said, okay, David, let's go. So I took him down the stairs. And I went around through the back, came back through the elevator, took him to bring, you know, the same apartment. And I said, this is your house. And I opened the door and I said, okay, ciao. And I just left him there alone. It was the same apartment. And he looked at it and said, oh, yes, this is my apartment. Things like that would happen. Right. And, and then maybe a few days after, he would start to sing, I want to go to my house. David's house. This is not David's house. Amazingly, David sometimes referred to himself as the other David, as if his own self were an imposter. The Capgras delusion has been known since the turn of the century, but has been treated as a curiosity, an anomaly. The standard explanation which you find in most psychiatry textbooks is a Freudian one, and the idea is something like this. This young man like most young people, when he was an infant growing up, he had strong sexual attraction to his mother, the so-called Freudian Oedipus complex. No, I, do, I, want, I, I talked to him and I said, he cannot evaluate me because I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. He said, wait, you're not, you evaluate your work for what? But then along comes a blow to the head, and suddenly and inexplicably, these sexual urges come flaming to the surface, and he finds himself sexually attracted to his mother. And he says, my God, if this is my mother, how come I'm attracted to her? How come I'm aroused? This must be some other strange woman. Now, this is an ingenious explanation, but it doesn't quite work. Because I've seen a patient who has the same delusion about his pet dog. He'll look at his pet dog and say, doctor, this is not Fifi. It looks just like Fifi, but in fact, it's been replaced by another identical dog. So how does the Freudian explanation account for this, unless you start talking about the inherent bestiality in all human beings or something like that? So what really causes the Capgras delusion? Well, it turns out that when you look at an object, the message goes to the temporal lobes, to the visual centers in the temporal lobes. But seeing is a multi-level process. After you've recognized it, 
you also need to respond to the object emotionally. This is obvious when you look at a Picasso or a Rembrandt or any beautiful picture. Even when you look at, say, your mother's face, the appropriate emotional warmth has to be evoked. Or when you look at a lion, you have to be afraid. And all of this is part of the visual process, but happening in a different part of the brain. Whenever we look at an object or a face, the message reaches the temporal lobes, where it's identified. But then it gets relayed to a structure called the amygdala, which is the gateway to the limbic system that contains the emotional centers of the brain. And it's here that we generate the appropriate emotional response to whatever it is we're looking at. Now, what I've suggested is that what's going on in this patient is the message gets to the temporal lobe cortex, so the patient recognizes his mother as being his mother and evokes the appropriate memories, but the message doesn't get to the amygdala because the fibers going from the temporal lobe cortex to the amygdala and to the emotional centers are cut as a result of the accident. Therefore, there is no emotion, there is no warmth. And he says, if this is really my mother, why is it I'm not experiencing any emotions, there's something not quite right here, maybe see some other strange woman pretending to be my mother. Ramachandran's hunch that David's delusions were being caused by the rupture of specific brain circuits was lent unexpected weight when David's mother recalled a breakthrough with the phone. David, how are you? Your papi. We got so tired of him saying, you're not my dad, you're my dad, you're not my mother, you're my mother. We decided, okay, you go downstairs, call on the phone and said, David, hi. And on the phone he would know he was his dad. On the phone he never ever had this problem. Had this problem. So on the phone, he'd always recognize on the phone, the, as his father. As his father. No problem. When he saw him in person, he would in say, person, you look like my father, but, but you're, you're not, not really my father. father. No. This shows the patient is not crazy. Why would he be crazy in person, but not on the phone? The answer is, there's a separate pathway that goes from the auditory cortex, the hearing part of the temporal lobe, to the amygdala. And that pathway was not damaged in David by the car accident. Therefore, when he listens to his father on the phone, there is no delusion. Yeah, great. This is a lovely example yeah. how you can take a completely bizarre neurological syndrome, maybe from the X-Files of neurology, which no one really understood, a person claiming that his mother is an imposter, and then come up with a very detailed explanation in terms of the known anatomy of the brain, saying, here is where the flaw is and then doing an experiment that takes just an hour to do so this first one's and showing that this is what's gone wrong in this patient okay are you comfortable to test his theory about the capra delusion ramachandran arranges to measure david's galvanic skin response which is the basis of the lie detector test if david's brain were normal he would react emotionally to this picture of his father this in turn would stimulate an almost indiscernible increase of sweat on his skin and a heightening of electrical resistance that can be measured. The prediction is that when people with normal brains look at photographs of people they don't know, they will not respond emotionally. So there will be no change in skin resistance. But a familiar face will prompt an emotional response and invariably there is a change. Now the question is, what happens with David? If Ramachandran's theory is correct, pictures of his parents will not evoke an emotional response, so the line should remain flat. Now this is also telling you about how all of us, how normal people, respond to faces and to objects. Because what happens to this patient is truly extraordinary. The lack of emotional response actually leads him to this very profound delusion that this person is not really his mother. In other words, the lack of the autonomic gut reaction, this emotional response, leads him to an absurd conclusion, overriding what his intellect is telling him. And this tells you how closely linked your intellectual view of the world is to your basic emotional reactions to the world. <laughs>